what is deep learning? Hmm. Is there a way you'd like to think of it that is different than like a generic textbook definition? The thing that I hinted just a second ago is maybe the uh, closest to how I'm thinking these days about the um, deep learning. So uh, now the statement is uh, neural networks can represent some programs. Uh, it seems that various modules that we are actually adding up to, or like a, you know, we we want networks to be deep because we we want multiple steps of the computation, and. Uh, uh, and deep learning provides the way to represent space of programs, which is searchable. And it's searchable with uh, stochastic gradient descent. So we have an algorithm to search over a humongous number of programs and gradient descent kind of bubbles up the things that are uh, tend to give correct answers. So a neural network with, a, with fixed weights that's optimized, do you think of that as a single program? Um, so there is a, a work by Christopher Olach where he, uh, so he works on interpretability of neural networks and he was able to, uh, to identify inside of the neural network, for instance, a detector of a wheel for a car or the detector of a mask for a car. Mm -hmm. And then he was able to separate them out and assemble them uh, together using a simple program uh, for the detector, for a car detector. That's like, uh, if, if you think of traditionally defined programs, that's like a function within a program that this particular neural network was able to find. And you can tear that out just like you can copy and paste from Stack Overflow. That So uh, a, any program is a composition of smaller programs. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing about the neural networks is that it allows the things to be more fuzzy than in case of programs. Uh, in case of programs, you have this like a branching this way or that way. Mm -hmm. And the neural networks, they, they they have an easier way to to be somewhere in between or to share things. What to use the most beautiful or surprising idea in deep learning mm -hmm. in the utilization of these neural networks, which by the way, for people who are not familiar, neural networks is a bunch of, uh, what would you say? It's inspired by the human brain. There's neurons, there's connection between those neurons, there's inputs and there's outputs and there's millions or billions of those neurons. And the learning happens uh, by adjusting the weights on the edges that connect these neurons. Thank you for giving definition that <laughs> I'm supposed to do it, but I guess you have enough empathy to no, you, listeners to actually know that, uh, that that might be useful. No, that's like, so I'm asking Plato of like, what is the meaning of life? He's not gonna answer. You're, you're being philosophical and deep and quite profound talking about the space of programs, which is which is very interesting, but you also for people who are just not familiar with the hell we're talking about when we talk about deep learning. Anyway, sorry, what is the most beautiful or surprising idea to you in, in, um, in all the time you've worked at deep learning? And you worked on a lot of fascinating projects, uh, applications of neural networks. It doesn't have to be big and profound. It can be a cool trick. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about the trick, but like, a, it's still uh, amusing to me that it works at all. Yeah. That let's say that the extremely simple algorithm, stochastic gradient descent, which is something that I would be able, you know, to derive on the piece of paper to high school student uh, when put at the, in, at the scale of, you know, thousands of machines actually uh, can create the behaviors we, which we called kind of human-like behaviors. So in general, any application of stochastic gradient descent to neural networks is, is amazing to you. So the, or is there a particular application in natural language, reinforcement learning? Uh, and also, would you attribute that success to, is it just scale? What profound insight can we take from the fact that <laughs> the thing works for gigantic uh, sets of variables? I mean, the interesting thing is these algorithms, they were uh, invented uh, decades ago and uh, people actually uh, gave up on the idea. Yeah. And, um, you know, back then they thought that we need profoundly different algorithms and they spent a lot of cycles on very different algorithms. And I believe that uh, you know we have seen that various uh, various innovations that say like 
transformer or uh, or dropout or so they can uh you know pass the help but it's also remarkable to me that this algorithm from 60s or so uh, or i mean you can even say that the gradient descent was invented by leibniz in i guess 18th century or so that actually is the core of learning in the past people are it's almost like a out of the maybe an ego people are saying that it cannot be the case that such a simple algorithm mm. is the you know uh could solve complicated problems so they were uh, in search for the other algorithms and as i'm saying like i believe that actually we are in the game where there is there are actually frankly three levers there is compute there are algorithms and there is data and uh, if we want to build intelligent systems we have to pull uh, all three levers and they are actually multiplicative and um, it's also interesting so you ask is it only compute uh people internally they did the studies to determine how much gains they were coming from different levers and so far we have seen that more gains came from compute than algorithms but also we are in the world that in case of compute there is a kind of you know exponential increase in funding and at some point it's impossible to uh, invest more it's impossible to you know invest 10 trillion dollars as mm -hmm. we are speaking about the let's say all taxes in US uh but you're talking about money there could be innovation in the compute that's that's true as well 